This is the Bush Whisperer coming at you from the beautiful Penguin Sanctuary. Coming to talk to you about diurnal cycles. Time, the Lord of Time. I've just recently done a video about health, about food specifically. Now we're going to consider the way in which the polarizing effects of the sun affects all fauna on Earth. And what this means has got to do with the breathing cycles of creatures when they breathe in, when they breathe out, and plants when they breathe in, when they breathe out. I want you to examine your body for a moment and realize that roughly two-thirds of all the cells in your body are not your own DNA. They are actually foreign, foreign to your physical body. External beings that are part of the internal makeup. It's quite a concept. And when we realize how much of the so-called body that we call ourselves is not actually ours, we start to appreciate the nature of these cycles of time. Now plants, as you know, breathe out CO2 when it's dark. And darkness doesn't necessarily mean that it's just to do with visible light. It's to do with the electromagnetic spectrum. So the plants are tuned in to this EM field. And some light is invisible. This is something to consider. The visual spectrum that we see is a small part of it. Plants are highly attuned to UV as well, for example, and infrared. Infrared affects the size of the leaves, for those of you that are growing plants. So by increasing the infrared spectrum, using light filters or however you want to do this, you can change the cellular structure of the plant, the size of the cells, and this will have an effect on everything else with regards to the plant development. And UV um, causes the cells to be smaller, but it also has an effect on secondary metabolites. These are the reactions happening within the actual plants themselves. And some plants are microscopic. A lot of plants, most plants are microscopic. There's something else to consider. So there's what we see, which is the macro world around us, and then there's the micro world, which we don't see. And there you have plants. We know about phytoplankton, which is like probably the most predominant form of plant on the planet, produces 70, 75% of all the oxygen that we breathe, recycles it, shall I say. And uh, so this is obviously fundamentally important for the sea, which is why whales need to be preserved, part of that fundamental ecosystem. And within the human body, we have the same process on a micro scale, as above, so below, so within, so around us. This is fundamental. The shaman does understand that the human body replicates nature. It repeats the pattern of nature within. So what one sees in the world around oneself is what one finds within oneself. This is the nature of life. From a shamanic perspective, understand nature and you understand your body and you understand yourself. You'll understand all that there is beneath the sun and the moon. Just in the same way that you'll understand all the thoughts and emotions that drive you and make you who you are. We can realize as well that the physical body, having so many microbes in the physical body, means that these breathing cycles are different and these changing breathing cycles have a profound effect on the way in which our body operates and so we can learn to live within the parameters of this understanding realizing that at night the microbes in your body will be doing different things than during the day so when should you be eating food and this is quite an interesting concept the different secondary metabolites, as well as the second, as, as well as the actual metabolic reactions, which produce the breathing cycle of these plants, and they are plants, micro plants living within the body, just as they are micro little animals living within the body, will dictate the patterns of the animals. So the animals eat the plants, and at certain times, the plants will be producing more sugar within the body. These tiny little micro ones. So. The best time to eat would be during the time that the diurnal energy is on high. The, the triple burner is a profound organ, energetic organ in the physical body. 
and can be understood in Chinese medicine to be fundamental and has its place within all the metabolic reactions within the body. And obviously digestion is going to be at, at its strongest point when this triple burner energy is at its most productive. So solar noon is the most productive time in the physical body for the diurnal cycle. It stands to reason. This is why you'll find many Buddhist traditions will eat only once per day and they'll eat at 11 o'clock in the morning. Because if you eat at 11 o'clock and you take your time and eat slowly, by 11.30 you've finished eating. By 12, your food's well on the way to digesting and your triple burner is getting its maximum impact between 12 and 2, doing your most fundamental time for actual digestion in the physical body. So in this way we can understand that it's really, really important to know when to eat. It changes the way in which your body digests food. It changes the way in which your body will actually um, take in and pull the nutrients into the body. It has a very, very profound effect on the state of our consciousness as well. And so we can understand Sorry, my little boy was disturbing me. He kept trying to take things, put them in my pockets. So it's, it's very important to be in tune with these cycles of time if you want to be totally healthy. And if you want to maximize your digestion, you're going to maximize your absorption, which means you can eat less food and get more from the food. And if you can eat less food and get more from the food, then there's less toxicity going into the body. Another thing to understand is consciousness. The consciousness in the body changes as per the consciousness of these micro beings in the body shifting. They have a profound effect on the consciousness field. For the consciousness field is a field of interaction. And this field of interaction is a structure upon which the body is designed, shall we say, and maintained through the energetic systems, the pranic systems, the physical body. So there's, there's a fundamental key to be understood here. They are the best times to meditate, the best time to attune. And those times for attunement are normally about four o'clock in the morning. There are a lot of microbes that are literally asleep. And they have less interaction in the consciousness field during this time. Less effects. And because of this, there's a more productive, positive, quiet time within one's consciousness field. A greater degree of peace. And so it's easier for us to actually connect with our deeper selves and with our guides when there's less interference in the consciousness. And these little beings are like, think of them as a marketplace, a busy marketplace within the physical body. So much going on, so much mental energy, so much physical energy, so many shifts, so many changes, so many subtle frequency shifts of vibrational attunements within the body affecting the greater vibrational field. So four o'clock in the morning is a very, very important time. This is why adepts from many traditions will actually try and be awake between four, five, and six in the morning. Before the sunrise, you reach a peak. And that's just before things start to awake. When the sun rises, you have an incredible awakening of the vibrancy of the pranic field in the physical body. Because all these little beings are awakening. So the pranic field is becoming attuned with the vibrations of life force. And so one's able to attune very deeply with life and the energies of the frequencies of life. And so one's etheric vision will be highly stimulated, affected between the dawn and the sunrise. And at sunrise reach its peak, literally. For one being able to see and attune to all these energies and these frequencies. So I hope that gives you an insight into why it's good to meditate early in the morning and why many traditions do this. It's also got to do with the repolarization effects of light, the electromagnetic field of Earth, and how the Schumann resonance is affected by this, and how all these beings are tuned to the Schumann resonance, this electromagnetic field, which is held in check and stasis by light. So that we can be in tune with the diurnal cycles and in tune with the Arcadian rhythms, which are how the building blocks of life are put together in terms of the rhythmic succession of vibrational fields interacting with mental fields to produce physical fields of phenomena. This is the Bush Whisperer coming at you, sharing a few ideas about time and the physical body and the consciousness field. I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss my daily uploads. And if you like this, smash the like button. 
and have an absolutely awesome, great day. I do tend to upload a video every day. So enjoy and have a, have a terrific weekend. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti.